Fisk, you mentioned the Olaf. Uh, that would have been more in the wheelhouse, not only for Inspired, but also if you want to try and shut down Ooh, Evelyn. Okay. But it seems that Rogue is drafted a lot more for the team. Again, you know, we heard it from Cajal. Inspired's the type of player that will play the tank, he'll play the carries, he'll do what the team needs. And they're saying they want a little bit more team fight power. And we are seeing traditional Rogue. You've got the straight front to back team fight, long range, DPS carries behind you, big beefy front line. Renekton can also peel versus fanatic, I feel. <laughs> uh, so that doesn't mean he never ganks. That doesn't mean he doesn't try to work with his team. It's just that if he has the choice, he's going to focus on himself rather than someone else. That ward already paying off. Yeah, he's been hooked and exhausted. Has to burn the heal. So that's two summoners down from the fanatic bottom lane. They're going to try and chase onto Hun Summer. Hillisang with the flay. Hun Summer has to flash away. Here's the big thing. Uh, as an Ash, you want to trade hyper aggressively in lane because obviously her back timers, if she gets sent back early, it's not as punishing as it is. Selfmade did a total top side clear, has now moved down towards the bottom side and is going to Towards his blue buff. Inspired actually pathing up towards top as the hook lands on Vander, but Vander should be fine. That's actually a really good move from Vander. Yeah, he's gonna oh, potentially lose his flash. Coming out, he's gonna flash away. Hillisang flashing forward. Reckless going in as well, and Fnatic are looking for first blood is taken. Hunt so, Summer just can't do anything. What started out as a really good play from Vander, denying Reckless and Hilly the free back, because what Reckless wanted to get there was the cheater recall. Force the way forward, then get back. Usually, this is about uh, unlocking Hilly on roam oriented champions and Reckless playing weak side. This time around, they are playing very strong side with the power duo of Ash and Thresh. Well, the cool thing about Hilly is he does the same thing pretty much every game. First back, level three, level four, he looks for a rogue. He's already looking for the roam top as Rogue is looking to die. Inspire's gonna try and turn on Selfmade, flash away. Inspire chases in with a flash of his own. Finn's trading onto Whippo, as you said. Hillisang's on his way up here. The Selfmade, the stun's gonna land onto Selfmade as he tries to get away. Whippo going in with a disdain, but he's taken down first. And now they're gonna turn their attention over to Selfmade. The Evelyn's gonna have to try and get away. The hate spikes raining hell upon Rogue. That's two for self-made, and the carry jungler is unlocked. And the throwaway lantern from Hilly to be like, please give me an assist, I participated. And Whippo, he's not going to lose that much time. Awesome. Of the best situation for them to be in in this early game. But this is classic Rogue. They immediately find their resets. They make sure that they have uh, the priority in the lanes necessary, especially because Larson's still on his Azir, and then immediately translate it into the Infernal Drake. Now, jungle item, maybe Rogue don't get that so much for free. And that's the thing, now that self-made six as well, he's going to have that invisible He's going to have the ability to get into some of these lanes and start picking people off because... Oh, he's dead. But as you say, Definitely. Finn might just be dead here. <laughs> he's going to get caught out by Bwipo. Submate going in. There's the charm. Dominus is popped, but he is bid beyond his death. Okay, so there. both Selfmade and Bwipo use the execute. Like Senna, um, which means that this type of play isn't getting Rogue as much in this iteration of the game versus in their previous ones because Han Sama isn't on one of those hyper carries as they find Whippo. It's going to be stunned up here. The death charge comes out as well. And I thought he was going to survive, but the Dawning Shadow says not today. Inspired gets the kill. Whippo a little bit too close to the wall. He was safe walking through his half of the jungle, wasn't expecting the Rogue members there, and Rogue looking to secure themselves the first tower of the I actually game. think it's just a huge mistake. Whippo should have expected them there. You saw that they weren't there bot lane. You know that they're probably going to rotate up for the Herald. He should have expected four members to be uh, hunting for him, and Whippo should have just disengaged off that tower much earlier. That's a needlessly large yeah. rod. All right, self-made, I see you. I'm, I'm really curious as to what he does with this itemization. Will he go for the straight death cap, or will he go for something like the uh, spell Binder, maybe get that extra bit of movement speed. Right now he's hovering around the bot lane, he has his eyes on Han Summer. Han Summer has cleansed, has flashed up, he dives in, Han Summer has no chance. I see that you cannot flash or cleanse the damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. Uh, every solo queue player has experienced that once before. Okay. Literally everyone. TP top, TP top. <laughs> Larson's looking for the flank position here on Whippo. Whippo does have to flash. The Emperor's Divide is available for Larson. He tries to chase out the Urgot. Going in, going forward. Whippo still trading. Vanda stepped way too far forward here as Reckless took down the tower and takes down Van Vanda's life. Whippo will pay for it in the top lane as Finn just needs a one last slice or dice. He's actually Larson. Wait for Larson to get the kill. Oh, okay, Cobra misses and Finn takes it in the end. That was awkward. Uh, but in any case, that is one kill for one. It was a good ultimate from Inspired to interrupt the TP from Nemesis so that he could not join that top lane fight. But curious as to what Vanda was doing in the bot lane. Yeah. Maybe when we get a replay, we can see exactly what was happening there because that is a big mistake. And Reckless and Hillisang are now only getting further ahead as Fnatic secured their first trade for the game. I'm gonna call it a, a whoopsies. <laughs> it was kind of awkward. I mean, we've seen a few whoopsies from uh, the bot lane from Rogue so far in this game. I'll give Han some of the pass though. He was like, I'm gonna get hit by the Ash Arrow. I just gotta flash yeah. it, gotta cleanse it. I'm ready. The Evelyn play definitely not his fault. <laughs> 
Finn now looking for a play topside. Selfmade is here. Gonna land that first bit of damage, but the stun comes out immediately on Selfmade. He can't survive. He's not tanky enough. He has a needlessly large rod. He doesn't have any resistances. And the body, the corpse of Evelyn, lies on the ground as the Fear Beyond Death comes out. Nemesis chasing up towards the top lane. Haven't really talked about the mid lane too much this game because they haven't really been involved. But here comes Nemesis. Finn got to dice and slice his way back, but he will fall. Crocodile shoes are going to be made tonight. You know, I think that Pip Evelyn combo is effectively. And that's because Rogue usually don't put themselves in danger. They very much like, did we get what we want on the map? If not, just back. Now the finding Nemesis. Locked up with the Glacial Prism. Pops the culling, of course, was buffed on 1016. But uh, here comes Selfmade. Here comes the rest. Fnatic Finn and inspired of Overstep. There's one. There's two. Hillisang takes one. And Nemesis gets the second. You're welcome, Fnatic fans. I just single handedly rogue or caster cursed yeah, rogue cast right there. Rogue. That was really good. They're so good at playing defense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hook now lands on Evander. Forced to flash out. Ultimate, a little late there from Hillisang, but you know what? Fnatic aren't going to be too upset about that one. What I think was really impressive with what Nemesis did was um, Nemesis assumed he was safe because his team was on the bot side of the map. They were pushing into the enemy jungle. Might not have time as Larson and Whipper in a 1v1. Empress Divide is going to knock Whipper away. Fear beyond death. Flashed away there by Larson. Self made though. Yeah, okay. Whipper used it because he knows that self made's on his way. Larson trying to use his tower or not. Right. Run to the tower, Larson! The spike comes out, he dodges away. Whipper's gonna take a lot of damage from the Sun Disk, and the TP target is there for Rogue. Self-made and Whipper will just retreat. However, it looks like there might be a little... 29 gold up at the 15-minute mark across the regular season. This is a very different look for Fnatic. Listen, they're having a good game. They're playing a lot of hit-and-run League of Legends. You got Evelyn, you have no idea where she's gonna pop up. Yeah, it's pure AP route as well. He's going to oh. second item because... You have three physical damage dealers on the rest of your team. You've got an Urgot, you've got a Lucian, and an Ash. So you can see Larson saying, well, I kind of need some armor. I kind of need some way of stopping this physical damage going through. And so he can't itemize against self-made. Whippo here flashes away from the Glacial Prison and should just be able to walk back underneath his power. The chase is still on him. Actually, with the hook coming out, that will be a very dead Urgot. I mean, while all this is happening, though, Whippo's probably in comms like, this is fine. They just yep. traded me for the uh, second mid tower. Also, Drake also went over in favor of Fnatic. And yeah, it. Yeah, uh, like Fnatic are playing the map very well right now, punishing any play that Rogue tried to make. And this is a 6k gold lead, 17 minutes into the game. You know, a lot of Fnatic fans were like, the Fnatic playoff buff, it's going to team. <laughs> this is very much everyone's diving in, small skirmishes everywhere, and then just attacking the map collectively, while Rogue are really struggling to get bundled together to have a strong spot. Self made more. Because if you pop it, it spots the Eve even if she's in stealth. That's actually super cool. It's like a. It's not often that you see Cloud Soul actually have an impact on the game. Fair. Yep. Well, sorry, I was kicked because last minute uh, CS. And I think the Rogue is playing around it very patiently, very smartly, and they recognize we have to be super careful unless we're getting a full on 5v5 team fight stacks right now, which is really delaying some of the center power that she gets. Is Fnatic going to rush this one now? They're going to shred it. Yep. I have two, you have two AD carries and Urgot and Evelyn. This is going to be gone before Inspired can get anywhere near it. The teleport's going to come out, but Rogue, yeah, just too little, too late. Place your prism. There's the depth charge. Reckless going to flash to the back of the pit, but here comes Larson. In goes the Emperor. Ooh. Down he goes straight away. His bodyguards did nothing for him as Reckless goes on a killing spree. Hans Summer's going to take him down, though. Vanda chased away. He's dead. Only Hans Summer and Inspired survive. And huge power move for Fnatic. You already talked about how much they were going to shred through the Baron. The teleport now coming up behind them as they are on the hunt. That was a 5v5 window that Rogue had, but they got there too late, didn't have the correct positioning, lost the big team fight, and lost Next the item, like, it's no longer just a single carry threat for Fnatic, and with a 9,000 gold lead, Fnatic would, well, anyone would be hard to say they're not going to win, because, wow, okay, that was unexpected. Selfmade gets one, he's looking for two, the charm's going to go out on Vanda, here comes Reckless and TP coming in. Fnatic aren't going to give them their final chance. With a minute on the clock, they can look to end the game right here, right now. 3v5 in favor of Fnatic. The culling goes wide, but Rogue are forced away from their Nexus Towers. And in 25 minutes, Fnatic are losing, looking to close this one out. Finn dives onto the back line, but he is done for. Inspired, pulled back into the jaws of death. Whippo happily accepts the kill. And the Fnatic buff, well, it seems to be well and truly alive as they take down Rogue in game one. That's the thing. It's only game one. Yeah. Yeah.
but I think you can feel it. Everyone's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they're gonna do it again. You know, I mean, what's uh, really... So I think there are a couple things. Number one, Fnatic, great Red to Bell. see them. Great to see them going back to... I'm gonna call them comfort picks in that we see like... We see the Urgot from the top line from Whippo. We see the Evelyn for self-made. It's not something that they tip 